Sam Howe or Mac Jones? Is that even yeah. close? No, it's not a question. It's not a and, question. And, and I mean, like I said earlier, I, I'm i just super impressed. You mentioned the toughness with Sam. I mean, that's a devastating pick. Amen. I agree with you there. It's always good to win. There were a couple points during that game. I, I tweeted out. I said, who wants the number one overall pick more? Because neither <laughs> team could really figure out if they were going to go and win the game. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm, with hate. You. I'm with you. Always good to win. Um, always good to win on the road in a tough place like Foxborough against a great coach like Bill Belichick, who's now 22-7 against first-year starters. So add Sam Howell to that list. We talked all about all week, all the Love hype that. about Belichick and a first-year starter and not liking the matchup. And Sam Howell, I mean, it's got to be the big headline from the week, in my opinion. 29-45, to 45, 325 yards, 27 yards on the ground, one interception, one touchdown, 84 passer rating. I mean, he was, he was lights out. He was lights out, in my opinion. I agree. I, I think there was – Things that he did today that were elite level, you know, we were we were kind of as we were prepping for this on the pod. Um, we're prepping for the pod. We're on the pod now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know that some of those throws you just don't see every, every quarterback make. They were absolutely incredible. Unfortunate on the interception because it was such a great drive at the end of the half there. Um, and just a poor decision. I was convinced he was going to throw that ball away and why he tried to force it in there. But, yeah, it happens with all quarterbacks. Um, you know, and uh, could have been easier, but in many, many ways, you know, coming off, you know, a, a uh, I would say, um, crazy week with the two trades, pretty solid performance by the defense and, you know, definitely could be more, we could see more consistency, but I'm not complaining at all. I'm super happy with the win. Could have been easier, but I think overall, you know, the team played pretty well and it was, uh, you know, they were the better team. So justice was done in terms of the final score. hundred percent. I agree with you there. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to see things, Another way, I mean, we had a couple bad bounces in terms of the fumble. Um, it was really just, you want to put that one on Brian Robinson, that's fine. But it was really just a hell of a play by the defender. Sometimes the defense. Yeah, those play, things are going to happen. You know, um, and I was more, I was more there. disappointed that on back-to-back drives, because we talked about it, like in a four-minute spurt, you saw all of, all of the Patriots, at least meaningful offense. Yeah, in a four minute spurt. B Rob fumbles. I mean, our defense was Swiss cheese at that point. And then we give them the ball back very next drive that that big long run um, that yeah. they broke. I mean, that was more or less it, other than you know an outrageous penalty that they got to put up the other three points. Yeah, that they did for the day. So, you know, um, yeah, we just let it let it get away there for a little while, and that was disappointing. Yeah, I think you tweeted out why why can't the defense, you know, stiffen up right at that time when we need them, um, but they obviously didn't, and it looked like the, all the momentum momentum have shifted that, their way at that point. Yeah, but you know we stuck tough and we finished the game. We got the win, and I think that's that's ultimately what matters. You know, we held held strong throughout the ups and downs. Howell obviously you know drives all the way down the field at the end of that. Second quarter going into halftime, just an amazing drive, keeping play alive after keeping play alive after keeping play alive, doing it with his legs, doing it with his arms, doing it off schedule, and then just rolls out on first and goal and throws it. I mean, it almost looked like the defensive back was even surprised <laughs> that the ball was coming in. Looked just like that's who he it. was throwing it to. 
Yeah, I mean, just through an awful pass. Um, it was one of those you had to like do a double take, and I tweeted out. I said, at the about halfway through the drive, I went, "Holy crap, Sam Howell looks like Josh Allen." And then he threw that pick, and I went, "Oh no, Sam Howell looks like Josh Allen." That was a good line. Because it was, it was yeah. both. Uh, you got the whole, the whole spectrum of it. But you know, for him to kind of bounce back the way that he did and come back and play well in the second half was exciting. And you know, overall, I think that's the, it's the big takeaway for me at this point. And I think, as a fan base, I think we saw the big shift after all the trades last, uh, last week, where we're not really. It's it's great to win games, but it's not about this season at this point. We're looking at what do we have moving forward? What do we have for the future? What do we have in Sam Howell? And I said going into the game, I said, I really want to see Sam string together two good performances because we haven't seen that yet this year. And we saw that today. We saw him kind of build and advance upon all of the things. He was getting the ball out quick. And when he was choosing to hold the ball, he was making those really great off-schedule plays that we were seeing him make at the beginning of the season when he was holding the ball a little bit too long. So he's kind of putting those two things together and I'm seeing a lot of growth from the guy. I mean, there was one play, I think it was on third down where he's sitting in the pocket and you could see he went through his entire progression and then he worked back to Dotson who was wide open on like a 20 yard crosser and got there right at the end of the play. And you just kind of, you can see he's got a much better feel for when to just let the ball go, which he was doing a lot. He, he had the one um, throw that he threw out of the back of the end zone over Bates's head when he was under pressure um, before he um, before he ended up throwing the interception on that drive. But that kept that drive alive. Um, and you see him just getting rid of the ball faster. So for me, that's really exciting. And, you know, defensively, I don't think we saw a huge drop-off without Chase and Montez. We saw Smith Williams get some pressures to Hill. Maybe wasn't as much of a factor as you would have hoped, but the defense overall played okay for the most part. It's that classic, like you just the team shut down for a quarter, and that's just what happens. But um, and you saw Forbes looked a lot better. Granted, New England maybe not the best wide receivers in the NFL, but good to see him take a step forward, build some confidence for the young man. You figure most of it was mental for him so far this year. So good to see him kind of get back in it. And then Quan Martin with that game ceiling interception. And yeah, it was a tip drill, but he had to react quick to get that ball in. And he was oh, in. Oh, it was a great, I mean, perfect, it was a was great a perfect catch. position for that. Yeah. He was exactly it was where he should have been. Um, so got to give credit to him there too. And it's exciting. We even saw KJ Henry look like a pretty decent pass rusher on some of those stunts. And, you know, we'll get into it a little bit later, but just a crazy call on that roughing the passer call um, on him. But overall, we're starting to see some some exciting little pieces. And I think, Pop, one thing I want to touch on before we get to these awards here, the offensive line looks brand new. We don't – it's yeah. not a top five offensive line in the NFL, but I think we're yeah. back to that kind of average place that we were at last year where they're not necessarily a liability, they're not great, but they're kind of – they're okay. The offensive line is doing its job. It's letting Sam win. And, you know, we could go into the whole talent evaluation issues that we've seen there. But ultimately, you know, getting Chris Paul in that left guard spot, getting Tyler Larson at center, we've seen this offensive line kind of start to come into itself, That's, which is exciting it, to do. It is. And, it, you know, it's frustrating that it took that long to make that change. And, yeah, you know, um, you know, Ron says about Tyler Larson that, you know, he's, he's great at making calls for the line, which is a hidden talent. But, you know, we had brought a veteran guy in that was supposed to be, you know, to provide that stability and that leadership. And that obviously, you know, didn't happen. But no, good, good, good call by you. Uh, you know, I think offensively, so still gave up three sacks, but they didn't seem, you know, to come at the worst times and, and, uh, you know, I think I want to make a point about the defense because I think it was a better performance than you might think. You know, you talk about they give up 11 plays for 45 yards on the first drive of the game. So the typical kind of slow start, but no points, right? That's kind of a harmless 45 yards. Then it's three and out, three and out, three and out, right? And then 
you know, we have a couple of bad plays on the fumble, right? So three plays, 25 yards, right? And then that one big play, two plays, 84 yards, right? And then the only other drive where they did anything substantial was the first drive of the half, 12 plays, 51 yards, assisted in a great way by a horrible penalty call, which we'll get into in a little bit. So you take away what I just talked about, the defense pretty much stopped New England. Now, not that that's super hard to do, but I think it was a better performance maybe than, you know, than we think um, because the total yards added up there, but it was really accumulated on one really big play, a harmless first drive at the end of the day, and, you know, a drive that was assisted by terrible refereeing. So I'm going to give – I'm going to give the – Defense credit. I think it was probably one of their better performances of the year, granted against a very poor offense and a not great quarterback. I mean, who would you rather have? We've said this a few times through the course of the year. Des- you know, we've talked about Desmond Ritter as well. Sam Howe or Mac Jones? Is that even yeah. close? No, it's not a question. It's not a and, question and, at this point. And I mean, like I said earlier, I – I'm just super impressed. You mentioned the toughness with Sam. I mean, that's a devastating pick to throw. You know, you can shift the whole momentum of the whole game at that point. He knew how big it was. But to come out slinging again in the second half and, you know, not really I – didn't, I didn't see any turnover-worthy balls in the second half. That might have been the only one of the game. I don't know. Your memory is better than mine. Um, like I said, those things are going to happen. I liked your point about B-Rob. You know, you hate to see the fumble there. It was a hell of a play by the defender. That's when your defense has to step up. And, you know, they didn't in that moment. Uh, you know, two drives in a row really just gave it right back up to them. But I don't, I'm happy. And I also say I also have one other quick point, right, to get to the awards, is um, – They had, you know, if they wanted to have any shot, and I agree with you, it's more about next year and this year, but they want to have any shot at a season, they had to win this game. You lose this game and it is over. And I think we said that on the pregame pod. I mean, they're one game out of a wild card. You know, the Vikings are five and four, Saints are five and four. You know, um, they're the sixth and seventh seed. They're in this thing. You know, I'm not saying I want to put money on it. But they're in this thing, son. It's classic uh, yeah, Ron Rivera. I, I think it is. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I think I think he goes by Rio Robinson on on Twitter. You've probably seen him. He, yeah, he yeah, does a lot of good tweeting out there. And he said this is going to be the classic Ron Rivera run. These next yep. three games before the Pats game. I don't know. I mean, Seattle got the doors blown off them today, but I think going out there is still a really tough trip. I wouldn't put a lot of money, but we'll get to that on Thursday morning's pod. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, I think, you know, they had to have this one and I, I don't know for me personally, I'm anti tank. I just want to have a season. I enjoy every win. If it's five wins, six wins, seven wins, I enjoy every one of them. And I enjoyed today's. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, a win. It's always better to watch your team. that you root for win. That's the bottom line. And I'm not, that's uh, right. I'm not in the tank conversation. Maybe I'd be feeling differently if our boy Slinging Sammy wasn't flinging the ball around the yard the way that he has. But at the end of the day, you know, I think I'm I'm pretty confident in what we have in this guy at this point going forward. So I'm not – you want to get the better draft pick, but I'm not super fired up about tanking at this you point. Know it's like a, you know said, it's an interesting – to just get a win. You know it's an interesting thing? You saw the report come out from Diana Rossini said how in the building they're really high on Sam Howe. And I now every time that's said, I'm like, okay, who? Yeah. <laughs> because if Ron and, and company are really high on Sam Howe, that doesn't mean anything. Exactly. Right? So is that it's got really Josh right. Harris's stamp of approval on it? Like I, you know, that's kind of where we are now. Isn't that kind of interesting? Like, you know, yeah, I want to hear is. that Josh Harris. This is high on Sam Howe. It is. And, you know, aside from Sam Howe, I want to give credit where credit's due to Eric Bieniemy because we saw them sure. come out 
and we saw them kind of echo a lot of the same things that brought them success against Philly, even though we lost. Brought us some success in that game. We did score 31 points. We saw him go right back to that at the beginning of this game. I still, I don't want to go away from it, EB. We're still, like, there's still certain moments where it's like, okay, we're calling the, the shot play to Deami Brown when we can close the game, and I understand Dotson's open underneath, but, like, let's just go to the slants there. Let's take it easy. Like, there are still some things, but I'm seeing similar growth from the enemy that I'm seeing from Howell, and that symbiotic relationship is starting to grow into something, which I think is pretty cool. And overall today, we did see a lot more balance from the enemy um, in that we did. We got 24 total carries to the backs, 97 yards in total. Uh, 18 of those went to B-Rob, 6 to Antonio Gibson. Gibson was by far more efficient. Um, but we did see a little bit more of a commitment to the run from the enemy. And we saw, you know, a lot of like, we saw some eye formation in the red zone. Um, we saw some, a lot of jumbo packages, which was nice to see. And you see that work seems to work well for this team. Um, so we saw a little bit more variance there. We saw that stretch. Um, handoff to Brian Robinson for the touchdown. Just what a great play design there. I mean, how often can you catch a Bill Belichick defense completely off guard with an outside? Yeah, handoff? that's that's pretty great. That's pretty good. Um, so exciting stuff there. And you saw the burst from B Rob. I mean, I think that would have been a touchdown from our own twenty yard line. Yeah, let alone there. No, it's a lot. Line. You it's love off. seeing it back get in clean so, on a run like that for sure. Yeah. So that was great. Uh, Pop, what do you say we get on to the awards here? We finally have a Let's victory so we can enjoy these awards. Um, Sauce Award has got to go to Sam Howell. You figured as yeah. much at this point, but you got to give the Sauce Award to Sam Howell. I mean, this is back-to-back weeks with over 300 yards in the air. Um, I mean, I'm looking at these numbers, and I'm like, what? Is this our quarterback? Like, it's, it's crazy. It's so – Exciting. I mean, he's completing, you know, three quarters of his passes almost and still 325 yards, 45 pass attempts. Like it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. And I, I love, I love seeing it out of the young man. And I, I told you, I've told my friends today, even after that interception at halftime, which was disappointing, I am fully bought in. I'm on the Howell train. I, I'm excited. I, I mean, it, he's a couple steps away from just going into the stratosphere. It, it, you know, I think it's it's crazy. I, I'm, you know, I'm almost kind of surprised that this town isn't more excited about Sam Howe because I feel like if you just, I think we forget to take into account that he's a rookie and what he's doing for being a first year starter is so special. It's is it perfect? By no means, it's not. But go watch. Every quarterback play. You watch Jalen Hurts play. You know, they make mistakes. They they don't make every throw perfectly. You know, it seems like with Sam, if he doesn't put the ball right in stride, you know, I mean, Dotson had that drop today where maybe it was just slightly behind him, but come on. Like who, who, and some of those throws are just elite. They're elite throws. And I, you know, I, I get it. We've got, we've got, what is it called? PTSD, like as fans, especially with quarterbacks, not to mention this team that you don't want to get too high on a quarterback, kind of want to pump the brakes a little bit. But what he's doing, I mean, there were points in this game where he put this team on his back. I mean, a 23-yard run on third and 23 like you talked about that throw across his body where we were both joking. It was kind of like, no, no, no. What are you doing? Yes. Yeah. What a and throw, was, you know? Pringle. And I mean, he saw it. He saw Pringle was wide open. So he made the flip. Um, you know, I'm fortunate on the interception. But again, those things are going to happen. To me, when you make a play like that and then you come back in the second half with 10 unanswered points to win this game, yeah, you know, you'd like to see the, the offense be able to seal that game up. They were this close to converting those first downs, right? I mean, they, would, they ended up like a yard short a couple of times. You'd like to see them be able to do that for sure. 
but I don't think that was so much on Sam. It just you kind of go in a little bit more of a conservative offense. But and I agree if you could maybe give a co sauce to 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 E B, you know, he's he's starting yeah. to really get into the rhythm and do some great things. But we'll 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 stick it, you know, stick with the players on the awards here and gotta give it to Sam. We almost gave it to him last week. He's gotta get it this year, this week. Yeah, he's uh he's balling, and I'm I'm excited to see what we got next week against Seattle. That that's a bad yep. defense. So let's see. Love that. Let's see what we can do next week. I'm excited for that uh for that matchup and just you know we got a quarterback. We got a quarterback. It's exciting. Let's hope so. It's good. Let's hope um, so. I'm excited to just watch this thing progress. Uh, I mean, if you oh, end this season knowing two things. We got a quarterback, and Dan Slider is no longer the owner. How can you be upset? Well, uh, I might and, even it. Yeah, go ahead. Things here because I think I might be about to say what you're about to say. If we end this season on this pace with uh, Sam Powell, and he's continuing to look the way he's looking, I think we have a head coach too. That's another conversation for a well, much later date. Maybe, but, maybe, but you also going, you, you also got to like some of the young talent and playmaking talent. That's where I thought you might be going. That's um, around him too. You know, I mean, that's a better the fact that he's that there. combination. No, yours is great, but that combination with Terry and Jihad and, and maybe EB um, is a lot to look forward to. And I, I, I agree. Like I've been up and down on EB a lot, um, and I know some of our listeners are you know, up on him, some are not so much, but I, I feel like he's just growing and learning and he wins every press conference. And I don't know, head coach or not, I, I'm not sure yet, but I am, I have been highly impressed with the growth we've seen, um, yep. you know, um, from him. And I mean, you know, with Sam, it's baptism by fire, the way he's slinging it, he's throwing the ball more than any other quarterback in the league and near as heck putting up as many yards. Um, and, uh, you know, he got to believe the learning that he's been able to do with this. It's incredible, right? His yep. development. Right. And I think, you know, going into the next off season, if we're able to retool the offensive line, maybe add a tight end because, you know, Logan Thomas, as much as I love him in the past game, he is just such a liability as a blocker. That is a concern. So if we're able to kind of start retooling this line towards getting a little bit more of a run game, maybe we start to see more balance from EB potentially next year and in the future. But let's get into the rest of the If awards. you don't have to go after a quarterback and you've racked up those draft picks that we racked up this week, you've put yourself in a hell of a position to reload. And I don't think this is yeah. going to be – you know, people talk about the – the process with the Sixers. I hope he's smart enough to realize this, this town isn't going to, this town's been in a process for 25 plus years. We got to reload quick. And I think we're in a position where we could potentially do that, especially if Sam continues to cook. Definitely. Um, let's get through the rest of our stickers here. I think we're both really excited yeah. about the the combination of the, the trade news into this game, into a win into Sam Howell playing the way that he did. And we're both fired up about that, which, which I love. I think it so. just shows there's a, a clear positive trajectory for this franchise. Super exciting. Um, but Helmut Sicker, speaking of positive trajectory, Jahan Dotson, got to give the guy credit. You know, going into the year, all the hype about this guy is going to go into the stratosphere. He's going to have a 1,500-yard season, smash the over on all of his player props, da 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 da, -da. The enemy is going to take him into the moon and starts off, horribly slow drops not getting a lot of catches not getting involved and then for him to come out today drop a few balls at the beginning get it together though could they continue to go to him you can see how really wants to trust him and have him as a reliable target and to continue to go there it is a sight to behold when he does bring the ball in and at the end of the day still put up four for 69 and a touchdown and you figure that could easily look Closer to, you know, six for 85 and a touchdown or seven for seven for 105 or whatever. Like he had a few, a few drops and a few drops where he had some yak opportunity and we know what he can do in the open field. So 
if he can continue to get that in shape, get ready for uh, for some sauce awards for Jahan Dotson coming down the line, I think. Then we got Antonio Gibson. We're also going to give a, a helmet stick or two here. Six for 34 rushing, five for 42 receiving. So Pop was like, I want to give Gibby an award. And I'm like, really? And then I looked at how many total yards he had, and I kind of remembered, like, he is just serving as such a great safety valve for Sam Howell and for this team offensively. When that offensive line breaks down, you give it to him, and it seems like he never gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage when Sam dumps the ball off to him. He's always getting three, four, five yards after the catch. Um, I know he's had the, I know he's had the fumbling issues, but I love that kid's attitude. I just love it, and he's got yeah. a great skill set. Um, I would love to see us bring him back next yeah. season. I uh, just a big, big Antonio Gibson fan. And, and you wonder, like, I, I can't imagine the market for Antonio Gibson is particularly on fire right now. I mean, it's not the numbers aren't crazy, but he does. He's almost like a. It's almost like J.D. McKissick. Like he provides that role to this offense that we really need, and he plays it very well. And he's he's our guy. So I I'd be I mean I think I think if you've well. got the three running backs that we've got, if you could bring them all three back, because you know Rodriguez has not even really gotten much of a look late, lately, and he's looked really good when he's in there. Yeah, don't mess with it. Get keep yeah. those three guys and focus on like you said, O line, tight end, of course. You know, filling some holes in the defense. Um, yeah. Yep. I, and then yeah, well deserved helmet sticker there. For sure. And uh, defensively, we're going to give a co helmet sticker. We're going to split the third one in half. Or we can give we'll give them one uh, each. However, we'll you want to do it. Go one each. Give, give a co helmet sticker to Emmanuel Forbes and Quan Martin. Um, we talked earlier in the game, uh, early in the podcast, about how during the game, it was exciting to see the young players kind of start to show up. And Forbes played really well. Two passes defended, three solo tackles. Martin had an interception to seal the game there. It's cool to see him get his name called, and he was right where he was supposed to be. And so it's just it's good to see the young players show up, do what they needed to do, obviously. Um, just really, really good stuff to see out of the two of them yeah. now. Getting into well, that was account. that was Martin's first career INT, right? I don't yeah, I mean it had to have been. He's played like yeah. all twenty snaps yeah. all season before yeah. today. So, yeah. I just I don't know. There's um, something in the back of my mind thinking he snuck one in there at some point. He had he had that crazy time. interception during preseason where he ran it back like okay. sixty yards. That's probably okay. what you're remembering because that was like one of the craziest plays that we've seen this year. Um, but no, that was his first. Regular season interception. Um, okay, constantly. It'd be game, interesting though. to see how many how many snaps they both got. It seemed like Forbes is out there a lot more. Yeah. Um, through the course of the game, and maybe smart by. I mean, I know I know it's going to be a shock to hear coming out of one of our mouths, but yeah, maybe smart by the coaches to this is a good game to build confidence because uh, Pats don't have much for receivers. You could see that. In fact, where they were trying to take advantage of us was on our linebackers, right? In terms yeah. of the pass game, so, taking yeah. us apart at linebacker. And boy, yeah. I mean, you know, Jamin Davis had that good pass breakup at a key moment, but he Oof. had a rough day. He had a rough day. Yeah. And David Mayo. <laughs> we don't need to say anymore. <laughs> David Mayo. Uh, we got Quiznos and Mayo. At linebacker, <laughs> match made in heaven there. Uh, oh boy! I mean, I never thought I'd be shining the bat signal for for our boy Cody Barton for Quiznos, but ooh, <laughs> David yeah. Mayo. Wow. Uh, speaking of Kikatsas, yeah. let's get into the Kikatsas of the game. Uh, it's got to be the rough of the passer on KJ Henry there. Um, just a nuts call. Just a really, really crazy call. I mean, you just what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? He didn't drive him into the ground. He just fell on him, tackled him from behind. Like, you just don't know. And, you know, I don't know. I guess allegedly there are much smarter people than me making these decisions, right? But correct me if I'm wrong here. Not really. We're trying, we're trying to teach, <laughs> Not really. Not really. <laughs> I, I, that's why I said allegedly. But if we're, if we're trying to teach the defensive ends to turn the quarterbacks to the ground sideways, 
isn't that more opportunity for the quarterback to get their ankle caught up under something or get their knee caught up under something? It's, isn't it better to get just – I don't know. I, I don't but know. I, I, here, here, it's just ridiculous. It's, a, it's a terrible call. They said – you know, it was it – was, uh, I don't know if you heard any of Ron's press conference. I only heard a little bit of it, but I did hear them asked about this. And he said – they told him it was the you know body weight. You know they say when you you put your body too much of your body weight on the quarterback, and which is ridiculous if you look at the replay. He rolled off of him like it, it's Get just a beautiful, it's a beautiful pass rush, and yeah. um, I you know I just don't understand why we're yeah I should say we I wish I got paid by the NFL but why you know we're half in on replay. I mean, how hard would it be for somebody in the booth to just go, that's a ridiculous call, pick up the flag, and you move on? How hard would it be it, when it's obvious, you know, when it's just purely obvious, pick up the flag, bad call, that's not roughing, move on? Why aren't we doing that as a league? Why aren't they yeah. doing that as a league, right? I, a, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I, problem and I think there's a hangover – you know, I don't like being one of those guys, but I think oh, there's a hangover God, from a Dan Snyder. Error. Come on, I mean, it's we never. It's fine. You could. We don't I, get you, calls. You're to, you're we to don't your, get your, calls. Yeah. It's bad. It's I just, bad. I don't. I just don't like doing that one way or the other. It's just that's just no fun for me. That's like for that for me. I get the same feeling that you get when I start projecting out the season. I'm just like I don't. Well, B Mitch, look, I'm B Mitch said it on the post game show, so I'm not alone. There you go. Hey, you're a good company. You're a great company, there. It's not uh, a. It's not. Don't misunderstand me. I don't think there's a direct intent, but I think there's a maybe just an inherent. You know, when you're playing a team like the Patriots at home, do they not have a ton, a lot better pedigree than we do? So you know, I don't know. It, Anyway, I'll let, I'll let that go, but it's an awful call, and it's yep. a serious kick It Mom, was a it, and luckily it, a it didn't call. you know it didn't really cost us at the end of it. So. I mean the bo- the bottom line is like the NFL they don't the the being an NFL official is not a full time job. It's not. It's literally not. They don't they don't give their officials benefits and take care of them the way that they should. And as a result, you don't have the best and brightest out there. You have the best and brightest on TV, like Dean Blandino, given the breakdowns in the booth. And it's a, it's a, but huge, that's... it's a huge problem. Being a ref in the NFL, it should be the best football minds that didn't get to coach should be refing. Former players should want to be refs. Former coaches should want to be refs. It should be a, a prestigious job and it's not. And as a result, we get this crap. Every week. And these guys, they stick together. They take care of themselves. They don't they don't go to replay. They don't pick up calls because they don't want to be wrong. And they don't want to tell each other, hey, you messed that up because they don't want to sell each other out. They want to be right. But, so and it, it impacts But I get game. it. Like, okay, it so the, the referee more. comes running in and he throws the flag because he thinks he sees something, which I think I, I'm sure he thought he saw something. Okay. And yeah. in, in a split second. We can all make mistakes, right? But then why aren't you using the technology to your advantage on a very obvious play? Like the obvious non-pass interferences or pass interferences. Yeah. Obvious, you know, when it's a 15-yard plenty, like if you look at, you know, the other football, soccer, we don't go there that often, but we're both big fans, right? You know, whether or not it's a red card or not is reviewable because it's such a big event. And it's kind of a similar thing. Red car is the equivalent of a personal foul in a, in, in a sense. Maybe it's hard yeah. in yeah. a sense because you're thrown out of the game. But it's like if it's a personal foul and it's obviously not, pick up the flag. It's easy. Just like you said, Blandino's in the booth saying it's a bad call. Why yeah. can't there be somebody like that in the booth just saying, nope, not a good call. Pick up the flag. Move on. And, well, and especially it might have been a fumble. That's the other thing. Like, the ball came out, and we recovered it. And, I mean, to have the ball come out, and it's on the 50-yard line where you've got a chance now in great field position, that is such a costly play to get wrong. At least, 
at least roughing the passer should be reviewable if there's a turnover in play. At least. And it should be the thing yeah. where you don't blow the ball dead. You we just saw it just happened in the um in the Dallas Philadelphia game. There was a fumble, DeAndre Swift fumbled it, the ball popped out of under the pile, and they let the play keep going. Dallas picked it up, returned it for, you know, 20, 30 yards, and then right. they took it back. It should be like that. You, you let right. the let the play go. Let the play go. And then when you're reviewing whether or not it's a fumble, sure, take a look at whether or not it's roughing the passer as well. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Because you know what? When you watch the replays, you can tell that these guys are so off base and they have no idea what they're calling. Because, you know, it's fast. These, these are big guys. Things are happening fast. It's hard to get right. And I, I, I do understand that to a degree. But I'm 100% with you, Pop, in terms of like, it's 2023. We've got replay. We've got all the access in the world to get this right. Why are we not getting this right? Yeah, and I know some people are probably worried about, you know, it's slowing the game down, but there's a way you can do it where it doesn't slow the game down. And 100%. when it's clear and obvious, reverse the call. 100%. And yeah. that's that's the slowing the game down thing is, is BS to me too because the clip is up on Twitter and people saying that's crazy before the next snap is even made. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. How does the average viewer at home have more technology than the league? These $6 billion yeah. franchises, 32 of them. On those situations where 95% of the public is outraged because of an awful call, how hard is it for a referee in the booth to go pick up the flag or you missed a call, should have been, you know, should have been roughing and you missed it. Right, just the obvious ones should just get fixed instantly. Yeah, by, and it, it may, it may, be. it's never going to be perfect. Maybe that guy makes a, a stop judgment call that's wrong as well. But anyway, I mean, I think we made our point. Yeah, Take guys and to the referee. we see it already with turnovers or with catch no catch when it's a very quick and obvious screw up. It comes down fast. It should be that fast with. Uh, with roughing the passer. And well, and I'm all for well. I'm all for protecting the quarterback. So it goes both ways. What if he did? What if it was roughing and it wasn't called? Right. So there, it, it could go the other way too. Right. So I'm not this big thing on. Oh, they're making the game too soft. They're trying to protect players. CTE is yeah. not a fun thing to get. So yeah. um. So anyway, I mean, I get that, but good. Stuff. Yeah, it's. It's it's frustrating. Um, obviously, you can tell we're frustrated about it. But at the end of the day, you know, last week we had some calls didn't go our way. We were upset about. We lost. This week we played a way better game the dub. and we won. We got the dub. We're still and in it, son. Pop wants to say we're still in it. That's great. <laughs> hey, whatever keeps you watching the Dom and Pop podcast, that's all I can. Absolutely. So if we're still in, hey, we're still in can it. I say something before we wrap up? Please, Juan. I'm still surviving. There it is. I, there the Tiger is. Survivor, still in, alive in the Survivor pool. Um, and the Commanders have turned things around. Instead of them hurting my fantasy team, they helped. I had Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin starting because my wide receiver depth is awful. Oh, your team is in shambles. And they both helped, <laughs> and I'm currently favored to win. Probably just jinxed myself after a five-game losing streak. You, so. may, you may have just jinxed I probably just jinxed myself. But let's wrap this thing up. I'm also pretty heavily favored to win at the moment. Team Carlo has been doing Love absolutely that. terrible, but we're pulling it together. So let's wrap this thing up, Pop. What do you say? It's been a uh, been a great week. Always good to get a win. Guys, if you're with us, if you're still oh, with us good. this far, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And, uh, yeah, we're on to Seattle. Let's wrap this thing up, Pop. Without further ado, I've been Dom. This is Pop. Thanks for another great week. Love me, baby. Can't go